Okay, today we've got another synthesis challenge. So we've got some starting materials and we've got this target molecule. How are we going to get there? What are the reagents we're going to use and in what order? What is our synthetic strategy to get this target molecule? So take a couple of minutes and give this a shot. Okay, so a very helpful way to start is to try to identify which carbons on the target molecule belong to which reagent. So we're looking at this and it seems very clear that all of this material is from this cyclic compound. So we've got a ring here, we've got a ring there, that's fine. Uh, so you know we're gonna we're gonna stick with that. Uh, and then over here we got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, seems very clear that these carbons come from those carbons. Now, um, a couple of things. We've, we see that we've added some oxygen functionality. Well, we do have a pi bond right there, so we're probably gonna be able to do something with that. And uh, we lost that hydroxyl, also the alkyne became an alkene, but we do know some selective hydrogenation methods to be able to pull that off. So uh, this uh, all in all looks very promising. So let's see what we can do. First things first, it, we, we know we're gonna, okay, we know that we're gonna wanna uh, join the fragments, which means we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to form a carbon-carbon bond. Now, we've got uh, uh, two things. We've got a carbonyl right here, and we see that the new carbon-carbon bond is in a very particular position with relation to that carbonyl, right? This, uh, the carbon alpha to the carbonyl appears to have been per uh, participating in the reaction that formed the new carbon-carbon bond with the other fragment. So that to me screams enolate chemistry. So we're definitely gonna be doing some enolate chemistry. Um, but in order to do that, we need, uh, we need, the, we need this uh, carbonyl present. So we're gonna need to, the first thing we're gonna have to do is add that, uh, add that oxygen functionality. So how are we gonna get some, uh, get an oxygen atom over here? Well, we know that we can do a hydration, but we're gonna have to do anti-Markovnikov hydration because this is the more substituted carbon. We want the oxygen on the less substituted carbon. So why don't we do some, uh, some uh, hydrobur uh, hydroboration oxidation? That's going to be a good way to do this. So uh, BH3 in THF, and then after that we, uh, we do this. So that is going to be, those are, we know those are the conditions for hydroboration oxidation. So what does that give us? That gives us this we get the hydroxyl on the less substituted carbon. And that's good because now it's very trivial to get the carbonyl. We can just oxidize PCC, probably is gonna be just fine because we're just going from the secondary alcohol to the ketone and, uh, and so there we are. So now we are ready to do some chemistry with the other fragment, but we do have to uh, prepare this to some degree. So what are we, how are we going to get this to react with something over there? We know we're going to enolize this. So enolates can attack hydroxyls, or sorry, uh, can attack carbonyl containing uh, compounds. So aldehydes, ketones, um, but they can also do SN2 reactions. So we might be able to save ourselves uh, a, a little bit of trouble here um, because we have some additional pi bond functionality that we, we don't maybe necessarily want to oxidize because that could, that could uh, do some uh, unwanted uh, side chemistry. So what if instead we just do this? What if we do uh, PBR3, right? If we do PBR3, uh, now we've got, and you know what, actually I'm going to put that a little uh, up here because we're not quite ready to react with that. So it, we know that PBR3 is the way we go from hydroxyl to alkyl bromide. So bromine just replaces the hydroxyl. So that's fine. So um, now we're going to, uh, we're going to generate the, uh, the enolate. And so there's plenty of bases that we could use uh, to do that, where, uh, it, to be safe we want to go to uh, this more substituted side. Uh, LDA cold is going to be a, a pretty good way to do that. So we'll keep it at negative 78 uh, Celsius, and uh, LDA is going to be great for that. So let's go ahead and get 
that proton. Uh, we're gonna grab that. We're gonna pop that there, form the enolate. And here is our enolate. O minus, and we've got that. So now this and this, we can we can join our fragments. We're gonna do our aldol uh, chemistry, or not, not really aldol, but just the enolate is going to attack uh, this alkyl bromide. So let's have that pop right there and kick that off. And already we are almost there because we have this situation. We're gonna reform that carbonyl and then we, uh, that methyl is still there, and then we've got this carbon, and then one, two, three more, with that alkyne intact, right? So here, this is the new, this is the new bond that we formed right there, to the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four carbons in that alkyne. Uh, and so now, one step left, we're going from alkene, or sorry, from alkyne, to the alkene. What kind of alkene is it though? It is a Z alkene. So which we, we do have a tutorial uh, where we go over the selective hydrogenation of alkynes to get specific alkenes, E or Z. So which set of reagents is that going to be here? Uh, we know that uh, Lindler's, Lindler's catalyst is going to be the way to do this. Lindler's catalyst takes us from the alkyne to the Z alkene. So that gets us to a target and that's done. So let's just review. We did some uh, hydroboration oxidation to, uh, to get this uh, hydroxyl right there. PCC, ketone, LDA got us the enolate. In the meanwhile, PBR3 replaced the hydroxyl with the bromine. And, uh, and then the enolate attacked there to give us this uh, where we were almost done. Then we just did Lindler's catalyst to go from the alkyne to the Z alkene. So that's today's synthesis challenge. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.